so so any questions from uh, this thing? The previous class? No, sir. Okay. So let's uh, let's continue. Uh, see, yeah, we can use this page. Okay, now uh, in the very beginning, I told you that uh, electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic waves or radiation. Uh, sometimes we call it just light, right? But it means we're talking about the entire electromagnetic uh, spectrum that involves radio waves, X-rays, visible light, ultraviolet light, and you know all of those things. So, but we usually shorten it to just light as it's uh, a word that is used on everyday basis. Now, I told you that this uh, wave behaves like a wave and sometimes I'll not call it a wave over here actually I'll just say this electromagnetic radiation electromagnetic radiation and sometimes it behaves as a particle okay unless and until you try to measure uh, this wave or this electromagnetic radiation, uh, it is a wave. But as soon as you perform a measurement, the wave collapses into a single value, which is a case for a particle. So for example, what it, what it really is, is it's a wave. That's not a good looking wave. Something like this, right? So, so you can see there are these peaks like this everywhere. Uh, this is initially uh, the electromagnetic wave. So it's a wave. But if I try to measure this wave, what happens is it, so after measurement, it collapses like this, right? So again, this is the uh, axis. For this also, this was the axis. And so it collapses into a, a single value and then you can read off that value at uh, what value. So for, for example, if this is X axis, this value at the, where it collapses to is always the expectation or average mean value of that variable. At that point, it uh, collapses and uh, becomes a part, it behaves like a particle. Uh, so, so you can see uh, this thing is dis discrete. Uh, I'll come to that in a bit. Uh, while this thing is co continuous. Now, continuous just means that it's a wave. It it, it just moves. Uh, as in, you can think of it as you don't uh, have to. Uh, there is no end to it, or there is no gaps in between. There's no disturbances in between, as in like gaps or something. Uh, while this is discrete as it's, there's all the other parts of this wave has have uh, vanished into this single part. So you just have one value at some X. So it is discrete. So, so particles are, uh, particles are discrete Discrete just means one, two, three, uh, four. These are discrete values, uh, while this one is continuous. So it would include one, uh, then 1.01, 1 .01, or you know, something like that. One point, uh, I'll just say one point dot, 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 dot. And then similarly two, and then, you know, go on. So it's continuous. Now, we'll look at, uh, this thing that uh, the, the photoelectric effect will reject uh, the wave nature of light, right? So, so the photoelectric effect kind of goes on to prove that uh, the, the light does, is not of the wave nature. So photoelectric effect rejects wave nature 
of light. Let's just call it light, right? But you, it's now understood that we're talking about the entire electromagnetic uh, spectrum. So let's see how, how does it do that? Why, how can we even say that it rejects the idea of wave nature of light? Well, first of all, just re remember in your head that uh, what photoelectric effect really was. You're throwing a particular frequency a photon at the material who, who has some work function associated to it. And that energy of the photon that you're throwing should be at least equal to or more than the energy of the electrons that are bounded to the surface of the material so that it can break that bond and the electron will just uh, escape. So that was photoelectric effect. We, we studied a lot of at least seven uh, characteristics of photoelectric effect. Keep those in mind as well. And now let's see how does it uh, reject the, the, the idea of wave nature of light. So uh, let's actually underline this entire thing. Okay. Okay, now for a photoelectric effect, if we observe that if we have less number of photons, right? Then you can, but they have, so for example, let's see, this is the material and this material has some work function associated to it, phi. If I take just one electron, uh, sorry, one photon, which has enough frequency that it is equal to or greater than or equal to the F naught. F naught is associated with this phi. So if it is so for just one photon, it will be it is capable of throwing out an electron from here. One photon throws out one electron. This was also one of the characteristics that we did uh, before. Right. So so doesn't matter a low intensity light uh, light wave photons can still produce photoelectric effect given that they have enough frequency right so so the first thing is uh, that how do we say this okay so even for low intensity wave or let's call it light but with enough frequency f is greater than or equal to f naught you get photoelectric effect right but if i take so again now suppose i take in many photons, right? So suppose this is one photon. I'll just draw it like this, right? So this is one photon, this is another photon. So there are multiple photons coming and hitting the surface. But suppose that, okay, so you have a lot of photons, but their energy, combined energy is, well, I, I'll just I'll call it energy because E is equal to HF. H is just a, a, a constant. Uh, it, usually, uh, we physicists we set it just to one because the constant does not tell anything about the uh, about the physics uh, what is happening. So we just usually set it to one, and this is e equals F in that scenario. So you can say whenever if I'm talking about F, I'm really talking about the uh, energy of this photon. So, so the energy of the photon in this case it is still uh, less than F naught, which is the frequency coming from the work function of the material. It will not be capable of producing photoelectric effect. So we, we gave so many photons, but if the frequency does not reach the threshold limit it's no electrons will be removed right so so if you use high intensity 
but low frequency, no photoelectric effect happens. No photoelectric effect is observed. Right, so is that point clear? Any questions from this one? Sir, F naught uh, stands for the... Oh, yes, it is the threshold frequency. So it is that frequency that is required to remove an electron from this uh, object, right? So you need at some frequency to remove an electron from the material. Uh, is it different for uh, different materials? Exactly, yes. Yes, it is, it is, it is different for uh, different materials. So... It depends on uh, how strongly bonded the electrons are in the material. It would be higher for those uh, and less for uh, loosely uh, bonded structures. Right. So, yeah. So, uh, any other question? No, sir. sir. Do they ask this in the exact the values of this threshold frequency? The values of threshold frequency. The threshold frequency. Oh, yeah, they, they might give you a graph, right? And the graph might look something like, actually, we have it up, up here. So let's just go back. This one. They, they might give you this graph and they'll not label. So it is the kinetic energy of electrons compared to frequency. And they might not give you that this is F0. So they will ask you, where does the threshold frequency lies? Okay, you'll say it lies here, but why? It lies here because before this, you see the kinetic energy is an, a negative value. Right at this point, the kinetic energy starts going to a positive value, which means this at this point, electrons are coming out. So electrons come out at a specific frequency, which means that this frequency, F, this one, whatever it is, we'll call it F naught, is the threshold frequency for the uh, for the system. So you need to have an understanding of what really is a threshold frequency. Uh, again, if you know uh, if you know that, then uh, whatever is the question related to that, uh, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to answer it. So uh, so again, is it uh, clear the concept of a threshold frequency? Yes, it is the mi minimum energy required to remove the electron, right? So, okay, so if there is no more questions, uh, I'll go to the next point. Okay, so uh, according to uh, a wave theory, according to wave theory, you expect that a low frequency light is uh, low frequency light for or incident incident on surface for a long period of time can produce photoelectric effect. Right, but it does not happen. Experimentally, when you see, you take a low frequency light and you throw it at some material and you say that, okay, uh, it's not, Eject, ejecting any electrons right now, but maybe, okay, so, but uh, according to wave theory, if I keep this, uh, keep the this light incident on this material for a very long period of time, eventually it's going to, uh, the electrons are going to gain enough kinetic energy and just escape. That is true for a wave because a wave is, uh, it's like this, a continuous thing. So, so, it, if you keep it, that's why the uh, you know in your uh, microwave ovens 
you set some time, right? So maybe you want to heat it up for 20 seconds, 30, one minute, uh, one minute, 20 seconds, whatever, right? So that time, the more time that you're providing it, uh, the more it is capable of uh, giving it, um, the more energy it is supplying to it. And that's why the more heat is being uh, produced in the food. So, so you would expect it uh, uh, to a low frequency light if it is incident for enough period of time, then you might you would th you will think that the photoelectric effect should happen, but it does not. Experimentally, you see that it does not happen. So again, this also kind of rejects the idea of a wave because if something is a wave, then it has to satisfy all the properties of waves. It's not. It cannot be that it satisfies a nine out of 10 pro pro properties of wave, uh, that would be that uh, you not call it a wave then, right? So, so you cannot disrespect the uh, the laws of physics. And, and in this one, uh, you see that it rejects this one. So it is not uh, a wave. Uh, then another thing is, uh, well, before I move on to that, any questions from this one? Any questions? <clears throat> no? No questions? Mm, can you hear me? Any uh, any questions? Uh, no, 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 sir. Oh, okay. All right. So, so let's move on to the uh, next point. Again, according to uh, wave theory. Uh, so I'll just wait. According to wave theory. If I increase the intensity of light, right? Uh, it it should it increases the maximum kinetic energy. Okay, uh, of the of the electrons, right? Of the electrons. Okay, so which uh, what does this mean? This means that if I increase the number of electrons per unit area, uh, I would increase the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons. Now, if you remember, this intensity is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude, right? So let's call the this x naught squared. This is the amplitude, and this is intensity, right? So if it if this is the case, then you also know that kinetic energy uh, for for an oscillatory motion, we know that v is equal to r omega. Omega is the angular frequency. So if I have half m v squared, then this becomes half m r squared omega squared, right? So then uh, this r is just the, 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 the length, right? The displacement. So for a maximum kinetic energy, E k max, this it becomes half m uh, x naught squared omega squared for maximum because it would be uh, x x naught. So, so you would expect uh, that if I increase the intensity, it should increase the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons, which means more energy is given to that particular electron, right? But again, this does not happen. This does not happen. Because everything that we talked about was for if, if we thought of it as a wave, according to wave theory. Uh, but 
but again, now this does not happen. In fact, what happens is, uh, in fact, what happens is more number of electrons are emitted. per unit time, right? So, so what you do is you increase the intensity and the effect of that is more electrons emitted, right? So increasing the intensity really means increasing the number of photons, right? So if, so if I increase the number of photons, if I increase this, so, and we know that for one photon, corresponds to one electron. So if I increase the number of photons, that will equally increase the number of electrons uh, produced. Equal, right? Okay, uh, any questions from this thing? No, sir. Okay. And the final point is that uh, there is no time delay. This is what we discussed before as well, uh, that there is no time delay between absorption of a photon and so when the photon is absorbed, electron is emitted, so n uh, emission of electron. Right. So now, uh, now let's move on to uh, the next topic, which is uh, the the idea of stopping stopping potential. Right. So stopping. Potential. Right. Okay. So uh, let me let me first draw the 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 idea behind this. So here you have uh, two terminals. Let's say this is positive. This is negative, and they are connected to a voltage uh, supply V. Uh, there's there's some voltage and then battery is connected. All right, so this is a minus and plus. Now what is happening? What's happening is you're taking a photon and you're hitting it onto this plate. What as a result, what happens? Electrons start moving in this direction because electrons will move from positive to a negative direction. And so for exa exactly same way, you have multiple waves. So you would see an electron again ejected this way and so on. I write for another one. Let's draw just one more electron. It's like this. So this is also another way. Right. So uh, so this is uh, what we have. So basically due to uh, the incidence of photons, you know that electrons are going to be uh, ejected from the surface of the material. These electrons are going to have variable kinetic energies, different kinetic energy for each electrons. So, so the first thing is uh, the ejected electrons have variable kinetic energies. Right. Now, what you do is you will, uh, what, what we want to do is at least, we want uh, to stop 
the motion of the electron right we can we can stop this or slow the motion of the electron down uh, by uh, by using this the, by using the fact of a stopping potential it really is uh, the so let me uh, write it down stopping potential right so so what it really is is the minimum potential difference that is required uh, uh, minimum potential difference in the opposite direction of flow of electrons. So you can see it makes sense because it, it the name makes sense stopping potential because it the potential difference is applied opposite to the motion of electrons. So it's trying to uh, stop these electrons uh, with maximum kinetic energy. Right, so so that's uh, that's what sp stopping potential is. So what we're doing is we're applying a potential difference uh, across these plates, uh, which is of opposing nature, right? So, so the potential difference is uh, of opposing nature in, with respect to the motion of the electrons. So what that, that does is that slows down this, this motion of the electrons uh, and eventually uh, tries to stop the motion entirely. Now what happens later if I, if I increase this potential difference and keep on increasing it, it results in the drop of current in if suppose if I connect an emitter over here as well, right? And you measure the current. So, so it would, and it makes sense, right? It makes sense because what is current? It is the total number of charges flowing per unit time. If I stop this flow of charges, then it would take time for the electrons to reach the, this plate, this negative plate. Right? because there is some stopping potential opposing that direct motion. So the current is expected to decrease, right? which means that less number of electrons are now reading, uh, sorry, are, are now reaching the negative uh, terminal. So, uh, right, so, was that clear? So higher potential difference implies uh, less current. Do not confuse this with that uh, Ohm's law, which was V equals IR, where R was a constant. If for higher voltage, you would have had higher current. But uh, but this is not that potential difference, right? This is uh, this is the uh, this is the potential difference in with respect to the the motion of the electrons right so so any questions um sir can you explain that one more time please uh which part uh the whole thing the stopping potential okay yeah, yeah sure of course okay so so what happens is because uh, the photons are thrown uh, at uh uh, at this, suppose in this case, they're thrown at this positive plate, you throw photons at it. Uh, the, as a result, electrons will be emitted. Uh, electrons are emitted, I drew them in this direction because they're inside this positive and negative plates where there's electric field has already been developed. So the like, motion of electrons is to the negative plate, to the right. Um, but sir, right. don't they like repel because they're both negative? Oh, yes. So. So they they really should uh, repel, but it, it doesn't really make a difference because uh, there is there are two ideas of current. There is one conventional current, and then there is electronic current, right? Conventional current is taken as this thing that that we are just doing, right? Uh, while the electronic current, the electrons would be really flowing in the opposite direction. So uh, even I like the idea of electronic current, but uh, uh, but for these 
I just used uh, the, the 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 conventional current instead over here. But you're right, right? Uh, but again, it wouldn't make any difference uh, in the physics. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. So, so this is a. Uh, mm, where was I? Yeah. So. Uh, the photons are thrown at this uh, positive terminal. As a result, electrons are emitted uh, with different kinetic energies, variable kinetic energies. Now what you do is you take this system and apply some potential difference across it by using this battery of uh, some potential difference V. Right? So, so if I do this, uh, then uh, this potential difference is applied such that it is of the opposite nature to the motion of electrons. So if the electrons are flowing to the right, the potential difference tries to uh, stop that by acting in this direction, right? So, so in this direction, the stopping potential is acting to slow or stop the motion of the electrons entirely. Now, if I increase this potential difference, I keep on increasing and increasing and increasing it, uh, it results in a decrease value for current. If you put it recorded in a meter, you can see it, the current would be reduced. Uh, so, uh, which, which really just means that less number of electrons are reaching the negative terminal. So, so is that clear? Do yes, not confuse uh, this thing. Uh, higher PD, less current, you might say that it is uh, contradicting this V equals IR, but this is not this, this potential difference is not this one, V is equal to IR. It is the opposing potential difference, which is with respect to the motion of the uh, electron, right? Okay, so now let's see, let's see in the page. Okay, uh, we're still talking about the same thing, but let's say what would be this work done uh, against the stopic potential. Against stopping potential. Okay, so, so the potential is trying to stop the motion of the electrons and I'm doing some work against that stopping potential. So, what, what would that do? That would be just result in the loss of kinetic energy of the electrons, right? So, so the stopping potential is really uh, trying to decrease the speed of these electrons or the kinetic energy of the electrons. So this should be equal to the loss in kinetic energy of electrons. Right, now, uh, if we know that the work done against any kind of potential is QV, right? This is the work, electric work done. Right, it's just Q times uh, V, where V is the potential difference, Q is the charge. So, so now what I can do is I can take this equation and put it like this, QV is equal to, the loss of kinetic energy uh, is just the maximum uh, EK max. What does this tell you? This tells you that this EK max is equal to, this potential is now the stopping potential. Right. So, so this is what we have.